Hey, I'm Allison. I'm a literacy specialist and I have a blog called Learning in the Primary Pond. And today I'm coming to you live to share about one of my absolute favorite topics to teach. And it's not one that I get to do a whole ton with now being a literacy specialist, but when I was in the classroom um, teaching all subjects, I just totally went all out and we did all sorts of literacy and math and art and science activities having to do with life cycles in the spring. So I wanted to share with you some of my absolute favorite activities. So we today are gonna go over some ideas for butterfly life cycle, um, frog life cycle, chicken life cycle, and plant life cycle. And if you're wondering where any of this stuff comes from, the materials, the printable materials anyway, come from the resource that is linked in my profile. So for all of the life cycles, I would do them um, in order. So I would usually start with butterfly and then frog and then chicken and then usually plant depending on timing. But for all of the last life cycles, I would make sure that our whole reading block was just full of different, you know, literacy experiences surrounding the different plants and animals that we were studying. So I do lots of read alouds and shared reading using books that had to do with the life cycles. I would incorporate it into guided reading too. And this is something I can still do now. Um, by having different books. So like this is how a butterfly grows and then this is how plants grow. And for each book in the resource, it has like, this is probably like a level C or so. But then I would also have a book with the same exact pictures and the same exact concepts, but it would be like an A or a B. So the kids were all getting the same content. It was just the level of the text is different. So that's a nice thing to have. Really, again, it wasn't just like we only did life cycles in science. It was I would do it, you know, throughout the whole school day, incorporating into literacy and math as much as I can, too. So starting with butterflies, this is one of my favorite butterfly crafts that we would do. And this is a great way to talk about symmetry. So I don't know if a lot of you teach symmetry. I don't remember if the Common Core Standards cover symmetry in math because I'm a literacy specialist. I don't focus a ton on math. But when I was introducing symmetry, I would love to do it this way. And I actually meant to print out a blank copy of this, but what you get in the resources, it's just an outline of a butterfly, right? No paint or anything. But what I would have the kids do is I would not really say anything or tell them what to expect, but I'd give them this blank page. And I'd say, okay, I want you to use a Q-tip to paint half of your butterfly. So they'd, you know, this would be blank for them and they'd start putting paint on half of the butterfly, just half of it, not the whole thing. And the way I would do that is I would put a little paper plate with different like temper paints or whatever on it, on each table so they could just use a Q-tip. It's actually pretty clean, makes cleanup simple because you just throw this away and they throw the Q-tips away. But so they, you know, make little dots and stuff. They can use different Q-tips for different colors of paint. Again, they paint one side of their butterfly. And you have to get them to do it pretty fast, otherwise it will dry and it won't work. But then what you do is you say, okay, everybody now fold your paper in half. And you have to get them to kind of not, you don't want them like pressing on it to spread the paint, but you just kind of want them to fold it. And I would have to, um, you know, with kinders, like help them <laughs> get it actually folded in half correctly. You can pre-fold and that helps too. But then you kind of want them to like press down on it. And then when they open it up, they will see that there's symmetry. So again, before we did this, I wouldn't say anything about symmetry. I wouldn't tell them what to expect. I would kind of ask them, you know, what do you think is going to happen? But then afterward, we would come back and have a math lesson like, okay, so when we painted on one half of a butterfly, you know, what happened when we folded it? And, you know, what, what is that what butterflies really look like? And then we would start talking about symmetry. So that was a really nice way to introduce symmetry, but also incorporate um, the idea of a butterfly's wings. So this is one of my favorite projects for butterflies. In addition, I like to get butterflies for the classroom, my butterflies, and for centers or whatever, this makes a great observation journal because they have to draw and then write about what they see. So that's a great center activity. Now, if you don't, or you're not able to get butterflies for the classroom, and this goes for any of the life cycles, a really great thing to do is just go on YouTube, um, obviously check to make sure it's safe, but go on YouTube and search for time-lapse butterfly or time-lapse frog or time-lapse chicken, whatever. And what you can do is as a class, if you don't have butterflies for them to observe, you can start the video, um, pause it, talk about what they see. They can like fill out a page of their journal and pretend that you have butterflies in the classroom. 
and then you pop, you um, press play and you watch a little more of the video and they write some more in their journal. So you could do that in one day, you could do it over multiple ways, but however you do it, it you can still use a butterfly observation journal even if you don't necessarily have live butterflies in your classroom. So that is another thing I like to do with the butterflies. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the frog life cycle. So the frog life cycle, as with any of these life cycles, we would do a lot of like, you know, ordering pictures and cutting and pasting and all of that. But a really fun thing that you can also do with the frog life cycle is you can incorporate a little bit of um, Play-Doh or clay or whatever you have. And once the kids are kind of familiar with the different stages, you can have them model the stages using clay or Play-Doh or what have you. So let's see if I can do this. The cool thing about using the clay is that they can start by making like a little tadpole, right? And it's really simple. And mine's not gonna look like a tadpole, and theirs didn't really look either. But what I was looking for is I wanted to see if they could make something with the tail. So then what happens to the frog is its back legs grow, but the tail is still there. So then you have them model two little back legs onto their tadpole. And then eventually the frog grows, you know, front legs and the, and the tail disappears. And so they actually do a really nice job once they know the frog life cycle. Um, so we start with something like this, but then they have a lot of fun doing it with the Play-Doh or clay or what have you. So that's a really fun thing to do if you're doing the frog life cycle. Um, same thing with the time-lapse video. I've never had frogs in the classroom, but you can just, again, go on YouTube and search for like frog life cycle time-lapse video. There also used to be, and I don't know if it's still there, but there's like a really cute, like, it's, I think it's from Sesame Street. There's a Sesame Street frog video out there on YouTube, so search for that. It shouldn't be too hard to find. One, oh wait, no, two other things. So another thing I like to do with the frog life cycle, and this actually goes for any of the life cycles, is puzzles. This is great for literacy centers or just free choice time or whatever. But so, whoops, I'm not showing you the right one. For the different stages, I would have puzzles and the kids would match them. Now this is like more of a kindergarten level, obviously, but maybe you have more advanced readers. And so maybe they can do the whole sentence where they read the whole sentence, they put the puzzles together. This is easy to make. You could even draw it if you wanted to. It's from my bundle. The link is there, but you could even make your own, draw it, whatever. Maybe have the kids make them. That would be really cool. But anyway, they match them, and then they put the puzzles in order. So I don't have any right here, but it would be the eggs and then, you know, the tadpole and all that stuff. So you can have them put the puzzles together, but you can also have them order it and then even write about it. So maybe you just do this, but then they have to write a sentence after they put it together. So that kind of extends the activity. Another thing I really love to do with the frog life cycle, and this is a song, it gets in your head, but it's so fun. It's called Tadpole Blues. And I'm gonna type the title here. Thanks, Stacy. I'm glad you're enjoying the ideas. Tadpole Blues by Peter, I think it's Cone. Um, if you search for that on YouTube, there usually are some videos with, whoops, accidentally typing this on here. Um, If you search for that on YouTube or iTunes, you can download the song. I actually have it on my phone, Tadpole Blues, but it's really cute. And the whole song is sung from the perspective of like a tadpole or a frog, and he's saying, what's happening to me? My tail is getting shorter. So it kind of like teaches them through the lyrics, the different stages in the frog life cycle. So I absolutely love that song. It's so fun. You could even turn it into a shared reading where I would have the lyrics on the board and you know, for that, for that week or whatever, we do the lyrics and that's the shared reading. We talk about sight words. So you can kind of extend it into your shared reading or other parts of your literacy block too. All right, moving on to the chicken life cycle. So again, with the chicken life cycle, we do your, you know, cut and paste stuff. They can label it. They can write about it. Like to also do these little puzzles where they're matching and they're actually, the light's kind of funky here, sorry. But um, they're matching like different vocabulary words to the different, I don't even know if you can see that, to the different stages in the chicken life cycle. So that's a fun thing to do for the chicken life cycle. And then also for the chicken life cycle, um, I like to do these little pop-up books. And you can do it with the chicken life cycle because there's fewer stages in some of the other life cycles. I did not bring my scissors, sorry. 
But so to make a really simple combo book, really, really simple, you're just gonna need two sheets of paper for each kid. And you fold the paper in half. And you set aside the other sheet of paper because you have to glue that on the outside, as I'll show you in a second. But you take scissors and you cut six little slots. And when you're done, what you get is something like this. I know it's probably kind of hard to see, sorry. But so you have these little pop-up things. On the outside is where you take your other sheet of paper and you glue it to the outside so they're not like coming through. But anyway, once you have, sorry, once you have your little pop-ups here or whatever, you can have the kids, where did I put this? You can have the kids take like little pictures of a chicken or whatever you have. Here it is. Um, and you can have them glue it and then they can label it. And then on the outside, you know, they make my chicken life cycle, blah, blah, blah. Just super simple. I'm like not a very good artsy craftsy person, but this is just so simple. You can pre-make it for them. And then they just glue these little pictures on. They can write about it. it. can be as simple or as complicated as you want. Hey, Vicki, thanks for tuning in. Happy Monday. All right, so that was chicken. I think I showed you everything for the chicken. Um, plants. So plants, my favorite thing to do is to time it so that we plant little, in little planters or whatever, we plant seeds and they grow and then they become Mother's Day gifts. So that's how I like to time it. Always work real hard to make that happen every year. Um, so we have the plants that are growing and every kid gets a plant observation journal. Those are included in the life cycles bundle. And so they can, you know, measure it and they can, you know, if they're using standard measurement, they can use a ruler. If not, they can, you know, how many bears high is it? How many counting bears high is it? So they keep track of that every day. That can be, you know, in your free choice time, that can be your mass centers, it can really be whenever. So in addition to that, we do plant life cycle, we do parts of a plant. Um, we also, so like this is an example of what we would do for plant life cycle, again, that's in the bundle. But we also go a little bit deeper and we talk about what do plants give us? Why are plants important in the first place? So we learn, you know, Plants give us wood, plants give, give us fruit, oxygen, all this other stuff. So that's something that we go over when we're going over a life cycle of a plant, parts of a plant. And I also like to choose just a couple of different plants and have the kids study them in depth because the interesting thing about plants is you teach them like, well, it's the stem and here's the leaf and not all plants look exactly like a flower, right? So the trunk of a tree. Is that the stem? You know, where, where are the flowers? Some trees, do they flower? So I like to go a little bit deeper and teach them about things like a cactus or a pine tree and just how we might learn about the parts of the plant, but they look a little bit different on different plants. So that's another thing that we do. All right, well, I think that's all that I wanted to share with you today. If you do have other crafts or activities or songs that you like to um, sing with your class, I would love it if you'd share it. And then, like I said before, all of the materials that I showed you are in the Life Cycles bundle there. If you don't do all of the Life Cycles, because that includes butterfly, frog, chicken, plant, if you don't do all of them, I do have smaller, like, mini units for each one of those things. But if you click on the bundle link and then look at each one individually, you'll see a link where you can go to a smaller unit if you just focus on one of those topics. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have other ideas, I would love it if you'd share. If you've got any questions, whether you're watching now live or later on, I'll be happy to come back and answer them. Hope you got at least one new idea that you can try, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.